Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. Be someone who cultivates a love for God's Word. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord.
So the title of today's message is His Great Name. And uh, I just want to start by saying that I really enjoy this time of the year. And I, I was wondering as to why this is the case. And then I thought to myself, well, maybe it's because we understand seasons change and they, they come and they go and we, we know that there is a new day as we go into the different seasons. But seasons don't arrive immediately. They tend to usher themselves in. You know, you get to the end of summer, you unpack your, your autumn clothes, and then you unpack your winter clothes, and then you go through the whole process again as we go back into spring. So seasons kind of usher themselves in. So I thought, well, that's not exactly the same as a new year, because the, the new year comes almost like an expected suddenly. There is a date on the calendar, and there's a time, and when that day and time comes, it is here, whether you are ready or not. And you can't stop it from happening, it just happens. And I, I like that. I like the predictability of it. It's almost like I can plan and prepare myself for it so that when this day arrives, it's like transition. Now, I realize that not everybody shares my sentiment about the beginning of the year. Some of you may be feeling overwhelmed at this time of year. Maybe you would prefer that the new year kind of ushered itself in like the change of season. And I can, I can appreciate that way of thinking. I mean, it helps to gradually move into something new. But the nature of a calendar and time does not actually afford us that opportunity. And I, I wonder if that's where the saying comes that we all know, time waits for no man. But as believers, we do not need to concern ourselves with these things. Because as believers, we serve the one who has time in his hands. God will not be dictated to by a calendar or by a clock. Time is in his hands. And so we do not need to be consumed by the time of the year or the change of the season necessarily, but we can just focus on the one who has time in his hands because he is the one who wants relationship with us. And we would be better served to focus our attention on him and our relationship with him than concern ourselves with a calendar and a date and a time. And we can do this because our lives are in Him. And we can just hand our lives over to Him because He is in control. Now that doesn't take away from the fact that I like a little bit of predictability. So I asked the Lord at the beginning of uh, this year, what is the the word that he would like to share with his people, with me and with you today. And um, I trust the Lord when, when I speak at this time of year, I ask him for a word or a, a, at most a short phrase that I can share with you. And I, I took a few moments just to go reflect on what, what the Lord spoke in previous years. And in 2019, the word was abundant life. In 2020, it was I can in him. In 2021, in the midst of everything that we were going through, his word to us was abide. Abide in him. And I, fascinate, I was fascinated by how relationally orientated these words are and how he wants us to be close to him 
and that he wants us to walk near him all the time. So point number one is God is sovereign. God is sovereign. In 1 Chronicles 29, reading from verse 11, we, we touched on it in the beginning of the service. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. And so we need to remind ourselves that the key to unlocking renewal is acknowledging and surrendering to God's sovereignty. And we can see this in the Word, and I'd like to share with you around this. Because maybe it's just the Lord's timing, which I believe it is, but on the 3rd of May 2020, which is a long time ago, Shortly after the COVID-19 pandemic broke out and the lockdowns had started, I shared a word with you about the life of Job entitled, Found Faithful. And yeah, we briefly touched on this aspect of God's sovereignty and the acknowledgement thereof being key to unlocking renewal. At the time though, the timing was not right. And I believe the timing is now right. And the, and the Lord wants to say, look at where you've come from. And I'm saying to you that we are going to enter into a season of renewal. So let's just summarize a few things about Job. Job himself was blameless, upright, one who feared God and shunned evil. And, and in this trial, no matter what, through, what he went through, he lost absolutely everything short of his life, this man. He even became discouraged, and understandably so. But through it all, he remained true to his character. And the Bible tells us his character was one of blamelessness, upright, one who feared God and shunned evil. Job, in his discouragement, even challenged God, but he always remained true to his character. Now, in Job 38, we see how God reveals himself to Job, realizing that God rocks up on the scene with the devil came into the God's presence in Job 1, verse two, uh, 1 and 2, chapters 1 and 2, and then God is kind of missing until chapter 38, which is a very, very long time. And in Job 38, for four full chapters, God goes through a series of questions which he answers himself. God challenges Job in return, making full known his sovereignty and omnipotence. It makes for absolute fascinating reading, and I would encourage you, when you get a chance, to read those chapters. You cannot but walk away with an overwhelming sense of how great God is. But to highlight how intense this exchange between God and Job was, we look at a portion of Scripture in Job 40 from verse 1. And from the New King James Version. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? He who rebukes God, let him answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer you? I lay my hand over my mouth. Once I have spoken, but I will not answer. Yes, twice, but I will proceed no further. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Now prepare yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. I don't know about you, but at this point in time, I would have been petrified. I think I would have been very fearful 
in the, in the presence of the Lord. I don't think Job wanted to answer God because what was he going to say? And we see as much in, in the text. Now, this happens almost halfway through God speaking. So Job, Job doesn't get much to say at all. So God then continues this exchange until Job 42 when, God eventually gets, uh, when Job eventually gets to say something. And we read in verse 42 from verse 1, Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that you can do everything, and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. You asked, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Yet the book of Job is a reminder that God is sovereign over all, and he owes no man, he owes none of us an explanation, because he is in complete control. And when you, when you read that portion of Scripture, God is not giving an explanation. He is just telling Job the way it is. And so the key to our renewal lies in surrender to his sovereignty and to his majesty. It brings me to point number two, and that is that God works in infinite detail. Now, how many of you, I'm sure everybody here, has heard the saying, the devil is in the detail? Anybody heard that? And sometimes we actually hear it far too too much. But did you know that it is actually a misattribution. Another word, big word, which uh, it sounds simple, but I didn't, I've never heard of it before. And so the saying, the devil is in the detail, actually comes from a German proverb that goes, God is in the detail. And somebody has changed it along the way. As a matter of fact, when you take the direct German translation, it says, the loving God is plugged into the detail. The loving God is plugged into the detail. And so to take a small portion out of Job again from chapter 38, In verse 4, it says, Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy... Or who shut in the seas with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band, when I fixed my limit for it and set bars and doors, when I said, this far you may come, but no further, and here your proud waves must stop. In verse 12, have you commanded the morning since your days began? And because the do- uh, and caused the dawn to know its place. I'm sure you'll agree with me, it's a little bit more detailed than Genesis 1, where, where it says God spoke and, and think creation came into being. But God works in such infinite detail. And it's the same with our own lives. And we, we know this, but our desire to control our own outcomes is sometimes so overwhelming. It's a constant battle between surrender to Him and controlling our own destiny. And yet family, He he has presented us with the opportunity to operate in His grace. We can. We don't need to operate in in a place of struggle. We can operate in His grace because we have confidence in our sovereign God and that He will take care of the detail. Point number three, God has not abandoned you. 
With all that's been going on over the last uh, while, it at face value is perfectly understandable to consider the thought that God has abandoned you. And yet, I want to say to you today, do not lend your ear to that lie. It's a lie of the devil. The, the scripture speaks very clearly about thoughts which are not of God, that you are to capture them and to bring them into submission to God. The thought that God has abandoned you is a thought that needs to be captured and thrown into the pit of hell where it belongs because God has not abandoned you. And we must not re reduce God to the size of our circumstance. Sometimes we, we look at what's in front of us and everything that's going on, and we reduce God to the same size of that circumstance. And you know, when you, when you do that, you give the enemy an illegitimate advantage and a potential victory in that circumstance. So don't do it. God is big. He's over all. And what might seem impossible for us Impossible for man is not impossible for God. So God will never abandon you, and God has not abandoned you. Psalm 23, verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You are with me. Psalm 37. It says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. As in, God orders your steps, and God, he delights in your way. In Jeremiah 29, we know that verse that says, for I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, and not for evil, to give you a hope in your final outcome. So family, let's rejoice in the goodness of our God today because he is good to us. He is the good, good father. Point number four is God is doing a work of renewal. I believe the word of the Lord for us today as a congregation, as God's people, is that we are going into a season of renewal. And the, the, the season of renewal is rooted in the fact that we have had a revelation of God's sovereignty and we have surrendered ourselves to his sovereignty as his people. We've surrendered our wants and our desires to be in control for everything and exchange it for a pursuit of relationship with him. And ultimately we know that Consistently, God has been telling us over the last few months, even over the last few years, that what's most important to Him is our relationship with Him. And that is where our focus and attention should be. You see, because in everything else, in heaven and on earth, He is taking care of the detail. He is taking care of the detail. Now, I know that God will do new things in the future. I know he will do it because a new thing he will do. He said it all over his word. But I do believe that there is a difference between doing something new and renewal. And God's word to us today is that some people's lives have been interrupted. And his word to you today is that he is going to do a work of renewal. You are entering into a season of renewal and restoration. So will you claim that for yourself today? Because that is the word of the Lord for you. And he's going to do this at a very deep and personal level. Why? Because people have lost at a very deep and personal level. God is saying he wants to, to come in and intimately minister to you a work of renewal and restoration. 